Police say thieves cut through a chain link fence to steal a boat from a Richmond dealership. Cleanup is underway after a trash pile several feet deep was found burning yesterday and the EPA was called in to investigate. We'll have the latest on that coming up. Some frightening moments for two people who were robbed during an overnight home invasion. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. On the eve of Memorial Day weekend, when thousands will be heading to rivers and lakes all over the state, a Richmond Marine outlet is missing one of its boats. Police say it was stolen. WKYT Sam Smith is tracking this crime alert. It's our top story at 430. A Richmond police officer was patrolling this area around 4 o'clock this morning when he noticed the fence was cut and a boat was missing. This is it. It's a 2008 low stinger worth nearly $13,000. It's pretty devastating for a small business like ours um, to take, you know, a financial hit like that. Kay McCarty is the vice president of the dealership. She says it seems like multiple people were involved in the crime because the boat had to have been pushed into position over the curb and near the fence before it could have been towed away. If you saw anything strange near Journey Auto and Boats overnight, or if you spot this boat, you're asked to contact police. It is really difficult when things like this happen, and we've suffered several things stolen over the years, and so we've done everything we can, you know, with the security and everything to implement this not happening. And I just feel really bad that someone would think that this is an okay thing to do. In order to prevent this from happening again, more poles will be put up in the fence so that a boat can't fit through it. In Richmond, Sam Smith, WKYT. Well, that dealership does have surveillance cameras, and the footage is going to be handed over to police. A property owner is facing fines in connection with a fire in central Kentucky. Owingsville firefighters say a large trash pile was set on fire on Day Road. The Environmental Protection Agency is now investigating. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is in Bath County with the latest. The property owner out here where all of this happened says he has no idea how the fire started, but says he is now having to pay thousands of dollars for the cleanup. Cleanup is underway at the property in between Day Road and Morning View Lane after firefighters got a call yesterday afternoon about a large fire burning on top of a hill with smoke that could be seen for miles. It was a big one. There's a bunch of junk in there. What was in there, I don't know. Once they found the fire, officials discovered they were dealing with a trash pile several feet deep, and the Environmental Protection Agency was called in to help investigate. The property owner, James Skaggs, says he used the hole to put garbage and brush in and says his neighbors also used the pile to get rid of trash and random items. While fire officials say yesterday Skaggs acknowledged starting the fire, today he says he was inside at the time and has no idea how the pile ignited. It just started. I don't know how, but they're saying I started it, but I did not. EPA come and broke me up and said I had to pay to have it cleaned up. How I'm going to get it paid, that I don't know. I'm going to fix the income. The way I've been told it cost me anywhere from eight to $12,000 to pay to have it cleaned up. The firefighters spent about five hours yesterday putting out those flames, and the cleanup crews out here say they expect to haul away at least six to seven dumpster loads of the burnt trash. In Bath County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And no word yet from the EPA on how much in fines on top of the cost for cleanup that the owner will be required to pay. We are tracking a crime alert in Lexington after an overnight home invasion. Police say two men wearing masks kicked in the door of an apartment on Northland Drive around 11 last night. One of the men had a gun and robbed the people inside. Police say the suspects drove off in a dark green SUV. And police are trying to figure out the circumstances behind an overnight shooting at a Lexington strip club. Officers were called to break up a fight at Diamonds on Winchester Road around 2 this morning. But when they arrived, no one at the club would cooperate. Parade. A man who was shot in the back later showed up at UK Hospital. He suffered non life threatening injuries. Some new details about the recovery of a young girl dragged by her school bus. Allie Redenauer's mother said the seven year old starts physical therapy this week. She had a follow up with her surgeon and is using a wheelchair to get around. 
Allie was injured last week when her backpack became caught in the bus door. A neighbor's security camera caught part of it on video. The bus driver suspended without pay. A gloomy day, I guess you could call it out there here in the bluegrass. Cloudy skies and much cooler temperatures. But things are looking up for the start of the Memorial Day weekend. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Guys, when you kind of bottom out like we are today, only way to go is up, and we're going to really shoot up as we go into the weekend. But remember at this point yesterday, we were talking about a big pool of cold air across far western Kentucky and Illinois and saying 24 hours from now that would be over central and eastern Kentucky. Now look at the temperatures on the regional map right on top of central and eastern Kentucky. And look at the coolest temperature. Lexington, 52 degrees. We have recovered in very fine fashion to our west. 66 Chicago. They were low 40s yesterday. Those low 50s across most of central and eastern Kentucky have been showing up through the day. Throw in some low clouds, a touch of some fog, some drizzle, a spotty shower. You get the definition of a very ugly weather day throughout the region. We throw the temperatures on top of Defender, which, by the way, is tracking not only a little bit of light rain, but also the cloud cover. Breaks in the clouds trying to appear across the Ohio River counties. Along and north of 64, it is certainly possible that two or three hours from now, before the sun calls it quits for the day, we may see a peak or two of some sunshine. For the rest of the area, you'll keep the clouds through most of the evening. Then we go into tonight, guys. The skies clear out. It's borderline cold. I'll show you why some upper 30s. Yes, some upper 30s try to show up tomorrow morning. Then we turn it up for the weekend. We crank up the heat, the humidity. Oh, no, yeah, maybe a storm or two. We'll track all that coming up in about 10 minutes. A little bit of everything, Chris. Thank you. We likely will not know the winner of the Republican primary for Kentucky governor until next week's re canvass, but no matter who wins, U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell says he will endorse them. Right now, Matt Bevan leads James Comer by just 83 votes. Bevan lost to Senator McConnell in last year's Republican primary for Senate. Bevan then refused to endorse Senator McConnell publicly after the race, but Bevan did urge Republicans to vote against Democrat Allison Lundergan Grimes in the general election. Senator McConnell defeated Grimes and is now the majority leader in the U.S. Senate. The owner of Kentucky Derby winner American Pharoah is fighting a lawsuit. The suit claims Ahmed Zayed owes nearly $2 million to a man for gambling bets placed at offshore casinos. American Pharoah's owner says the lawsuit is a criminal scam. He and his attorneys have asked that the New Jersey federal judge dismiss that case.